Dear brothers, one month has passed since the announcement of the 26th general chapter on the Pentecost day. Now, I would like to share short reflections to help the preparation of the general chapter. The various major organisms have named commissions to facilitate the process and to work with the commission from general chapter. Today, I like to speak on the process of transformation. We shall have this chapter preparation as a process of transformation of the entire congregation, starting from individuals, communities, provinces, and the whole congregation. The last general chapter invited the whole congregation to a process of transformation. In fact, in the chapter document, the word transformation with its variants are used 16 times. After five years, can we say that we have made significant progress in the process of transformation? Perhaps we can say yes. Maybe there are more that we could be done. In the biblical sense, transformation is conversion a turning away from and a turning towards, or a replacement of the heart of stone with the heart of flesh, the spirit of Christ in the place of the spirit of the world, a light lit to dispel darkness. So transformation is into the likeness, growing into the likeness of Christ, seeing, loving and acting from the heart of Christ. The process of transformation is like to the yeast of the kingdom in Matthew chapter 13, 33, or growth of the wheat and the weeds, or the mustard seeds, and a seed is different from the tree. In the nature we have the, the icon of transformation is that of the cocoon, which goes through a process of caterpillar and the butterfly. The best description of a transformed clarition is the definition of a son of the heart of Mary, which our founder has given to us. A man on fire with God's love and spreads that fire wherever he goes. And the whole description of that, uh, of the clarition best expresses the transformative process and where it leads us to live, to imitate Christ and to live for the glory of God and the salvation of all humankind. The transformative, transformative process has two moments. The first is an, a quick insight or an awakening, a turning away to a new scene, and a slow process of integration, which uh, makes differences in our life. If we have only the first, the quick insight, we may end up with a euphoria and uh, the, it will not be accompanied further. We see that a lot. When, the, when a chapter comes or a new beginning comes, we have enthusiasm, but then in one year time of, of uh, one year time of preparation, we get tired of. So anything, just the newness doesn't last. The real transformation takes the slow conversion of change, which leads us to a greater sense of perseverance, resilience, fidelity, especially in the midst of difficulties, boredom, tiredness, even suffering and persecutions. As we want to make this uh, chapter experience a collective transformation, we shall not just remain with the initial enthusiasm, but keep going, even when at times we may feel tired or discouraged. True growth happens silently in the way we progress towards the person of Christ and bear fruits proper to our, bear fruits that come from our experience of the Lord. 
transformative process has a focus and orientation. It is Christ and the gospel values. If Jesus and his values are kept out of picture, there cannot be a transformative process. If we take in the market values or consume all the heresies that appear in new packets, we are not in a transformative process in Christ. Transformation is not mere cosmetic external changes. It is interior change. It implies a change of our vision. It implies the openness of the heart, readiness of the will. And we see the project of God. And we do not count very much on our own strength, but the power of the Spirit to transform us and make us instruments of his work in the world. The, we, have, we count on the gift of the Spirit to, to face challenges. I would like to share with you one of the, the recent collective journey of our congregation. We want to grow in our own appreciation of our intercultural wealth and to share the beauty of our coming from different uh, cultures, different countries, and to feel at home wherever we are sent. So this needed a preparation of those who go out into missions and those who receive, and any clarition, you know, or practically every clarition, to grow in this aspect of our interculturality. An online course was prepared from the general government. Brother Charlie was the, the one organizer of that. And we had about uh, nine tutors to accompany the participants. And in the last two months, from May and June, they were on this course. And the other day we had the evaluation and the participants were very positive about the, their experience. And this was possible because of the generosity and collective journey, especially the role of the tutors. 53 clinicians have completed this program. We have also some cases maybe the need further to improve our communication and join journey. 13 have given names, but uh, they have not entered the course. And about seven just opened and nine left after four weeks. Therefore, 29 of our clinicians could not benefit from that course. But however, the 53 who have passed through it is a, a very positive thing. When we mutually support one another and the generosity of tutors and those who are around help the process, we can create in us a culture of learning and learning together and progressing. I believe that is our future. Journeying together and collectively growing so that we feel a share in the beautiful things happening in the congregation. And we support and assist our brothers who may be finding occasionally difficulties. And this, let this chapter journey be a journey of walking together to greater love and to the depth of God's love, which we have received, so that we can communicate that through our life and mission. So let us make the path by walking and God bless you.